Marcus. Our Thanks conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mac, voted best personal injury law firm in the best of Indiana County contest. Marcus and Mac, a law firm representing injured people. So diabetes alert day. Now we had you and Dr. Syed in here a couple of months ago talking about diabetes. Yes. And uh, that was in association with Heart Month. Diabetes can really impact every aspect of your health, can't it? It can. It's uh, one of the. It's the leading cause of heart disease. It is the leading cause of kidney disease in the U.S. It can cause uh, neuropathy, which is pain in your feet. It can cause, um, you know, stroke, heart attack, and um, all sorts of other complications. Um, including blindness and problems with your eyes, but often it goes unnoticed for a long time. Yeah. How come? Why, why, why do people not know? Well, a lot of times you don't get symptoms right away. Um, it's estimated that there are, it's, it's an astounding number, 96 million people in the U.S. that have, uh, are age 18 and older who have prediabetes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's also a lot of people who have diabetes itself and don't even know it. Um, It's not until the glucose levels go really, really high, the sugar levels, until you start having symptoms like increased thirst, increased urination, fatigue, um, among some other things. Yeah. Okay. So maybe we'll get into some of the symptoms of it. But we're talking really three types of diabetes? Well, uh, there's more. even. (laughs) Wow. Um, You know, there's... uh, for insurance purposes, a lot of times we uh, lump people into three types, mm-hmm. uh, type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, and gestational diabetes. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess you could say the fourth would be prediabetes, which is kind of like a, a, it can be a precursor to diabetes. Uh, just because you have prediabetes doesn't mean you're going to end up with diabetes. It's a warning sign. It is. Um, and so it's a call to action. Mm-hmm. And um, there are some things that you can do to prevent it. Um, and probably the number one thing is if you are overweight, um, working on weight loss, um, if you're not able to do it yourself, there's tons of healthcare professionals out there. There's lots of people at IRMC. There's multiple departments at my office um, that can help with weight management. And there's also the diabetes education department. There's the weight management department, Institute of Healthy Living, um, and there's some really great programs out there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you said at your office. What is your office? Yes, I work with Dr. Mushtaq Syed at Indiana Diabetes and Endocrinology here in Indiana. Um, we're in the 119 Professional Building, um, and we um, focus on adult endocrinology. We do see some adolescents, um, but we see basically people with endocrine issues. So an endocrine issue is anything that is affected by hormones. Uh, Diabetes is probably one of our leading conditions that people are referred to us for treatment. Some people refer themselves. Um, And from there, you know, you'll see myself or Dr. Syed. I am um, board certified in advanced diabetes management. And as you said, I'm a nurse practitioner. Dr. Syed is an endocrinologist. He's a medical doctor. Um, if you would uh, think you would need referred to us, our phone number is 724-463-1048. Also, you can talk to your um, health care provider about it. Mm-hmm. Um, we refer a lot um, to diabetes education, and often that's the number one, the, that's the first step once you're yeah. diagnosed with diabetes is get into diabetes education at IRMC because I think they do a really good job. They have a lot of free programs and Insurance covers a lot of these programs, too. They have some group classes available. Um, They're doing an event today. Um, It's a pre-diabetes brunch, which was free. Unfortunately, it's at 930, so if you're not registered for that, you're kind of missing out. Um, But they do have another event coming up. It's the grocery store tours. Mm -hmm. Remember, I don't know when this went away, but I remember when I was younger, you go to the grocery store, and there'd be those people set up. That would give you free samples of stuff. Remember oh, yeah. that? Sure. There'd be like 10 of them. Mm-hmm. Well, they don't have that anymore. But if you go to grocery store tours, <laughs> then I think that's kind of what that's like, which sounds cool to me. <laughs> and I wish I could go, but it's always on a work day. <laughs> so if you're retired or if you have off on, let's see what day it is. <laughs> mm, 
April 20th at 10 a.m. You okay. can try before you buy, but you do have to call to sign up, um, and that would be the IRMC Diabetes Education, 724-357-7164. Yeah, but, that, you know, that's an educational program, and they, yes. they, they specialize in those sorts of programs that are going to give yeah. you an idea of the signs that you should be looking for mm. and the steps that you could take uh, to either prevent diabetes from becoming a major factor in your life or to actually turn around diabetes uh, because it is something that is reversible to a certain extent. Right. And, you know, a lot of the focus I think that there is in this country, there's an overemphasis on physical activity and you have to be able to walk or run or jog a marathon to be skinny and lose weight. But, you know, that's really not true. The the bread and butter of it is uh, avoiding the bread and butter <laughs> and uh, learning <laughs> how to read nutrition labels. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's kind of what the grocery store is about is teaching people how to look at nutrition labels mm -hmm. and learn what you're putting in your mouth, what foods are healthy, um, you know, looking at, you know, teaching calorie counting, teaching carbohydrates. A lot of people think that uh, diabetes uh, is, uh, quote, sugar. Um, so I think it's probably because a lot of people call it blood sugar and stuff like that. Sure. And so when they look at a nutrition label, they often get conned into this false labeling uh, or misleading labeling that says stuff like zero sugar, no added sugar. And they think it's healthy for them. They think that that is a quote unquote diabetic friendly food. Mm -hmm. But often um, these foods contain flour. Um, Say and that again. What was that flour. word? Flour. So like any type of those, like those diabetic uh they they add, I think they even say something about like diabetic friendly like sugar free mm, cookies. Sure. Well, there's really no such thing as sugar free cookies in the sense that we're talking. That if you look at the box and it says carbohydrate, um, that's really what you're looking at. Your body actually turns that into sugar. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, pasta. Pasta, if you look at the back of the nutrition label, might have. Um, very low amount of sugar in it on the label, but it's very high in carbohydrates. So um, that type of food you really want to limit and try to increase the amount of fresh fruits and vegetables you're eating. Yeah. Um, and that can help. Our country really is sugarholic though, isn't it? Uh, yes. Yeah. We're very much addicted to sugar. Yeah. And if you mix it with caffeine, that's even better. <laughs> <laughs> Um, better is uh, sort of an iffy term there. Yes, uh, yes, I would say it's more addictive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and it becomes more dangerous too, uh, because uh, you know you can't just have a little bit. Uh, it seems like when we get into those habits, uh, then we just want to keep pouring it on, and and that's bad stuff. Yes, it, I th I think I am a, a recovering um, re uh, code red Mountain Dew. Holic. <laughs> that was my addiction in uh, college. I loved Code Red Mountain Dew. Yeah. And then honestly, I started working in diabetes education and working with Dr. Syed. And I thought, what the heck am I drinking this stuff for? This is garbage. Yeah. Um, and I think I rationalized it. Well, it's just one, but I do a big bottle and, mm -hmm. you know, I don't have diabetes. Like I'm a healthy body weight or, you know, I would rationalize it. Well, I need it because I'm working shift work. Sure. Um, I was, you know, nursing at the hospital. And uh, so then that's kind of a slippery slope because one to starts turning into two and to every day. And that's a lot of sugar that your body just doesn't need. There's really not any nutritional value in pop. Yeah. And we, we justify it. That's what we do. We yeah. just justify it by our lifestyle, our work schedules, those, those sorts yeah. of things. Uh, when the bottom line is we just like the sugar. Uh, and, and so that being the case, Healthy diet, active lifestyle, those are two pretty good approaches, aren't they? Yes, for sure. Those, I would say that's probably the staple for prevention of type 2 diabetes. Yeah. Okay, so type 2 diabetes is what we're mm -hmm. talking about here. That's yeah. the re more reversible kind of diabetes. Right. Type 1 diabetes, different story. Yes, that's a, an autoimmune condition. It used to be called juvenile diabetes. Yeah. Um, that one is trickier in that there's really nothing that, um, or I should say there's not much you can do to prevent it. Mm -hmm. um, it. It is thought to be genetically predisposed to it, and then you're, something happens that will trigger your body to basically attack its own pancreas. So these mm -hmm. people are dependent on insulin. 
And right now there is no cure for type one diabetes. So these people are often on insulin pumps. They have to do, or they have to do insulin shots uh, a few times a day. Often they're on continuous glucose monitors and you can live a very good quality life with type one diabetes. I mean, we have some patients in our clinic who have had type one diabetes for over 50 years. Yeah. And that, you know, they were, they literally had to sharpen their own needles. Uh-huh. Like they had a little pumice little, stone that they sure. would sharpen their needles and had to reuse needles at the start of their diabetes journey. And now they're on insulin pumps at the age of, you know, 78 or 80 years old. Sure. Sure. And, um, and, and it goes the other direction as well. I can, there were a couple of uh, high school basketball athletes mm-hmm. uh, that uh, this past season, you noticed they had the insulin uh, the the thing on their arm yeah uh, and and it's amazing what those young f- folks can do yeah uh, with 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 their condition yeah uh, you manage it and and you move about with your life and that that's really what we're talking about is getting back to a normal lifestyle despite the fact that you have diabetes right there's some there's ultra marathoners who have it there's lots of pro athletes who have it there's a NASCAR driver who has it um so I think a lot of these advances in medicine can help, but also asking for help um, is really, I think, beneficial. There's support groups out there online. Mm-hmm. I know diabetes, uh, IRMC was starting an insulin pump support group to help those who mainly it's focused, uh, you know, most of the time if you're on an insulin pump, you have type 1 diabetes. So yeah. have that kind of social support aspect too because yeah. it's hard. It's a constant management. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, people do it. You can do it with your smartphone now. Just hold it up there and yeah. it'll tell you what your levels are and give you an idea of what you need to do. Yes, yeah. absolutely. All right. So um, you mentioned uh, the prediabetes, uh, the test. Are you at risk test? Yes. There are a number of those available, but online you can find one of these types of things, right? Yes. I think diabetes.org is the easiest one. It's the shortest to type into the computer. Okay. Um, and they have the... That pre-diabetes risk test, mm-hmm. um, and it has a calculator. So it basically is a point system. How old are you? Are you a man or a woman? If you're a woman, have you ever had gestational diabetes? Um, I don't know. Do you want to go over the test on the no, air? Or? We're, we're not going to have time. Okay. For that. Then w- inside a minute. Yes. To go here. So um, I would highly recommend anybody um, do the test because it only takes about maybe two minutes, well, says, which is more than we have. But. It says a 60-second test. <laughs> oh, 60 seconds. That's what okay. it says online. But yeah. uh, however long it takes you, it's worth it Yeah. Uh, just to find out um, if you are at pre-risk. Uh, the bottom line is yeah. see your primary care physician on a regular basis. They might be able to, to help you diagnose right. this uh, Absolutely. early. Uh, and then if they, you need the services of your office or some others at IRMC, certainly the resources are available at IRMC. There are, yes, we're very blessed. We have a lot of good resources here in town, and IRMC has a ton of stuff. Terrific stuff. Annette Kobalik, thanks so much for coming in. Thanks for having me, Todd. We appreciate that. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160. I sort of get the idea we could talk about this for another hour or so. Yeah, I when I get on a roll, I can keep going for a while. <laughs> Jake is in the newsroom. He's coming up right now, the CBS Sports Minute with Mr. Boomer. This is Boomer Science with the CBS Sports Minute. Today's birthday shout-outs go to Jim Turner and the Jets. 60 years ago today, the bankrupt AFL New York Titans were sold to an investor group led by Sonny Werblin, who changed the name to Jets and their colors to green and white. A year later, Turner became the Jets' place kicker and ultimately helped beat Baltimore in Super Bowl III. I'm Boomer Esiason. On the battlefield, there's a saying America's military men and women live by. Never leave a fallen warrior behind, ever. Off the battlefield, Wounded Warrior Project operates with the same goal. Wounded Warrior Project was created to help our men and women returning home with the scars of war, whether those scars are physical or mental. Wounded Warrior Project. We never leave a fallen warrior behind, ever. Learn more about what we do at WoundedWarriorProject.org. We expect our information in real time. U.S. Med carries continuous glucose monitors, which 